Hey there, hey, Tamara here, and we are embarking on a new season of Married at First Sight. I mentioned on the final video that I did for last season that I was experiencing burnout from doing the recaps for the show. Chow, the burnout is real, and I still haven't fully recovered. I've learned that I prefer to do research and tell stories, so I'm going to pursue that path and hopefully you'll hang in there with me as I create various types of videos to see what feels right. However, I do know that we have a great Married at First Sight community here that enjoy hearing my little two cents and partying up in the comments section. So I don't want to abandon ship 100%. I'm still not sure what these videos will look like this season or if I will even create one every week for the show, but I'm going to try to cover it in a way that doesn't burn my ass out. Okay, so let's get into this episode. This was the one where the cast tell their friends and family that they're getting married and pick out their wedding outfits and have their bachelorette and bachelor parties. Let's talk about the seven red flags that I see so far and things that stood out in this episode. Oh, and if you stick around until the end, I have a huge spoiler alert to share with you. And for those of you who don't like spoilers, I will give you a warning first so you can click out of the video before I spill the tea. Red flag number one is Kirsten, who will be Shaq's wife for being a picky patty. She actually admitted that she is picky. She said she's picky about life, food, hair, and men. She said she wants him to be physically fit, tall, nice face, beard with a low haircut, not bald like the man they chose for her, by the way, and said that she doesn't usually give men a chance. So all of these specifics are huge red flags for a show that loves to pair people with the opposite of who they asked for. So history has shown us that picky people usually turn out to be a disaster on this show. She's so picky that she even told the experts what size his penis should be. Come on now, size queen. But okay, along that same line of reasoning, are you prepared to tell how tight your sugar bowl is? I mean, let's be fair. If she gets to go on national TV and set a guy up to possibly be shamed due to his penis size, isn't it only fair that that same woman should have her sugar bowl scrutinized? We know that either the producers or Keisha on After Party will eventually ask her about his penis size now. I just think that some topics don't need to be discussed, and this is one of them. She also said that she wants her husband to ask her before he goes in for the kiss at the altar to make her feel more comfortable. Now that would have been a decent request if we hadn't seen her the night before swinging her legs around the stripper's neck at her bachelorette party. Now she's gonna be an interesting one to watch because how she views herself versus how she comes across may not line up just right. And whether or not she's gonna give Shaq a chance as a toss up because she clearly has a specific person in mind and he's not it with his shiny bald head when she wants a man with a fade. Red flag number two is McKinley's story. McKinley is going to marry Dominique. Now, he was introduced to us in the matchmaking special as an entrepreneur. He said he dropped out of college to start a cannabis business, which he loves. Now, Pastor Cal even asked him about being an entrepreneur and whether or not he can provide for a family, to which he replied that he's well established and does well for himself. So the part that doesn't make sense to me is that he allegedly packed up and moved to Nashville to find love four months ago. He moved in with his friend's parents and is now working some type of project engineering type job that he doesn't like. So in one episode, he's an entrepreneur selling cannabis and in the next, he's got on a hard hat. I'm not buying this story for a couple of reasons. One, why would he turn his back on a business that he loves and claims to be doing well in to move in with not his parents, but his friend's parents in a different state? And for four months, like he wasn't able to scrape up the funds to get his own place, even though he can provide for a wife. And now not so coincidentally, four months ago from when he taped that scene is when casting would have been searching for singles for the show. So I'm thinking what happened is that he was recruited to do this show and moved to Nashville temporarily to participate in the casting process and is staying with his friend's parents because he still has his place in Michigan because there's no need to get an apartment or whatever if he's not going to move there. Now, this is just my little theory based on the convoluted story they gave us. 
Red flag number three, McKinley's past relationship horror story. So this is how it goes. He was in a relationship for around two years. They were to the point of talking about getting engaged and married. And one day she sends him a picture of a ring and he's like, oh, is that the ring you want? And she's just like, no, I just got engaged, fool. Okay, she didn't say the full part. That was me being extra. So on the after party, he filled in some more of the blanks and said that while he was in a full on relationship with that woman, a man hit him up and said that he was dating her and had no idea that McKinley was dating her too. So apparently she told McKinley that she would break it off with that other guy. So McKinley decided to give her another chance. Turns out that she continued seeing the guy, married him, and got pregnant right away. Now we didn't see anyone question whether or not they gave that baby a DNA test. Anyway, when McKinley talked about this story, he kind of teared up, like he's still hurting from this incident. And according to his bio, he's got trust issues because of this. I don't believe that he's properly healed from this and is ready to get married, especially to a 25 year old when he's 34. Oh, and on a side note, did you notice all the solo yoga and meditation in the park? I mean, it looks like a Devado or Cialis commercial. Moving on to red flag number four. 25-year-old Dominique admitting that her mom signed her up for the show. Okay, getting married in this way is no joke and should be something she decides to do on her own, not her mama. They call her an old soul, but that doesn't mean she's ready for marriage. When she was hanging out with the other brides, she said the things she looks forward to the most are birthday parties and bachelorette parties, any opportunity she has to hang out with her girls. If her current goal right now is to hang out with her girls as much as she can, that's okay, but she should have ripped up that Married at First Sight application. I don't know, Mom. I don't believe your daughter is ready to hang up her party life just yet. At the bachelorette party, she allowed those cameras to catch her doing the most with one of those strippers. She put a shot between her boobs and paid him to put his lips down her top to grab the shot and drink it. She even nominated herself as a person who spent too much time with the strippers. I'm not mad at her for wanting to get her freak on with the stripper, but I'm not picking up wifey vibes from her. Red flag number five, Chris's wife, Nicole's safe word, pineapple. Girl, you know if you overwhelm men so bad that you have to give them a safe word in order to bring you down from your word hurricane, please do not fill out a merit at first sight application. She actually seems like a cool person, but she may be too much for her new husband. Red flag number six, Jasmine's soon to be husband Aries being a picky reformed player that has never had a committed relationship and had sex two weeks before finding out he got picked to do the show, which meant he knew he was in the running and one of the semifinalists when he was having sex. If he's now in relationship mode and his player days are behind him, who was that woman he slept with two weeks ago? Was she a potential mate or was he still in player mode? I mean, is she going to run up on him talking about she's pregnant with his child? We've seen that happen before. His own cousin said he's not ready for marriage and needs to figure out how to make a relationship work. And to add a little salt on the wound, they paired him with a woman who said she's shy in the bedroom. Given that up to now, this man has been in player mode, is a woman who is a lady in the streets, but a lady between the sheets a good match? I don't think so. And they seriously picked a guy that has never been in a committed relationship to be married at first sight. Like overnight, he's gonna have the tools he needs to be committed to a stranger. All I can say is good luck training your new husband, Jasmine. Red flag number seven, Clint. I mean, that's it. I just don't trust his vibe. I believe he's gonna be a problem. As for the spoiler, according to Media Takeout, one of the couples do not make it to the end, like to decision day. If you don't wanna know which couple it is, it's not too late for you to click away. Okay, so according to Media Takeout, Dominique and McKinley do not make it to decision day. I know, I would have guessed that it was Clint and Gina. So they spoke with someone they call a production insider who claims that their breakup will be epic. Now, after reading this, I watched the trailer that says coming up on this season of Married at First Sight. 
you know how at the end when they show the couples walking up to the decision day couch well dominique is wearing jeans this appears to be footage they use in the matchmaking special not decision day could it be that they don't have decision day footage to show because she never made it there we'll see what happens and i'll see you in my next video